Hey, my name is Ben. In this devlog, I'm going to tell you the most important constraint that I found while working on my indie game, Demon Lock. It's funny because when I had the idea for this constraint, I actually hesitated. I already had a lot of other constraints on my constraint list, and I knew that this one was going to be a really hard one. But what surprised me was actually how much fun it was. The constraint is the no text constraint, meaning I can't put any text inside of my game. The one exception to this is numbers. I'm allowed to have some numbers in the game, but there's no more text anywhere else in the game. I'm going to switch over to my computer screen and show you two examples of what I mean, how this constraint has made my game better. First, we have the summoner's mana. Normally, I'd put a label under the summoner and have, you know, it would say mana three out of three, but I'm not able to do that, no text. So I decided to try and do these little icons here, but that just was not, that was not looking good. You can tell that that's not a good way to go about displaying mana. Nobody's gonna know what that actually means. I was inspired by this character here from Slay the Spire. And the character has these orbs that float around the character and you can get more and more and more of them. And I thought that that would be a good way to display mana. I could have the orb hovering by the character and when it lights up, then you know that you have mana in that orb. That led me to this mock-up here where I made a quick little mock-up of the character and the orbs. It looked like a promising start. So then I created an animation I made the empty orb, so no mana, and then an ignite animation, which looks absolutely terrible out of context, but you'll see it in context here soon. And then the lit animation where the orb is actually burning. And here's what that actually looks like in game. You can see that the character is gaining more and more mana as this, as, as it increases, each orb lights up. I can also go into the player summoner and set the max mana to something like six, run the game again, and here you can see there's six mana orbs now, and each of them lights up as the summoner gets more and more mana. The second example of where this made my game better was with the spell menu. So Originally, I would have done, you know, some sort of a spell menu with the spell description and the name of the spell. The next logical step was just to use icons like this. I had icons for a menu and just each icon represented individual spells, but this felt wrong as well. This didn't feel like the right direction to go. But I thought, since these are spells, why not have a spell book and I can have it hovering over the battle. And so I designed this little mock-up, and what I've actually implemented of this, I haven't 100% implemented all of this stuff in this mock-up, but I've implemented enough that I can kind of show off what it looks like. So I like the direction of this mock-up, so I animated the spellbook opening with an open animation and a turn page animation as well, so we could have the pages turning back and forth as you cycled through your different spells. So here's what that looks like in battle. You can see as I get mana, I can then open up my spell book, cycle through a couple spells, cast a spell, and the book will be there again. I can cancel out of it as well. And if I use all of my mana, which that was the end of the battle, but if you use all of the mana, let me run it again and show you, the, the little thing on the front will no longer be lit, so it lights up. And that was one of the ways that I tried to connect the mana on the summoner to the spell book and try and indicate to the player how that was going to work. Obviously this process of creating these sprites and figuring out how to do it without the text has been extra work, but I think that the final product from it is a lot more compelling, it's more interesting. I'm certainly more excited about it and excited to show you all and I think that this constraint has been so beneficial to the project and I'm looking forward to see how it affects the, the project from here on out. There will be a link in the description if you want to sign up for the alpha for Demon Lock. 
Also, if you want to support my channel, there will be a link to my one bit Godot course where you can learn the Godot game engine and use it to make your own games as well. Thank you all so much for watching this and I will talk to you all later.